Hi guys, uh, my name's Ed from Meaty Place Cafe down in Fryer Street. My wife Nancy, who's in the background filming and looking after our little boy, um, uh, runs it and owns it with me. Um, so we're going to we're going to cook a soup, sort of a nice thick um, Italian style soup today. Um, it's sort of like a minestrone. Um, there is loads and loads of different recipes out there for minestrone soup because um, it very much is it dictated by what time of year you're in and also the recipes and methods change from village to village. Um, so first and foremost, equipment you'll need for this. Um, a decent sized pot, um, the bigger the better, I always find. Um, uh, a good sturdy chopping board um, and a couple of knives. I've just got a sort of small serrated one and then a big, which might look a bit intimidating, um, chef's knife, but I'm just, just comfortable with that. Um, but with knives, just use whatever you're comfortable with at the end of the day. There's no right knife, no wrong knife, kind of. Um, so yeah, that's the equipment I have. Um, and then ingredients wise here, I've got on my board, I've got some washed and sliced leeks and garlic. Also um, a green chili, just for a bit of, um, a bit of heat. And I've got a, a lovely selection of um, vegetables here. I got this from Three Counties Produce in Worcester. So as you can see, we have some parsnips, some fennel, uh, some leeks, some carrots, courgettes, uh, some onions, and a red pepper as well. Um, so these are all the, the, the fresh ingredients. And then moving on, I have one tin of chopped tomatoes. Uh, I've got a little bit of um, vinegar. I've got uh, some pepper um, and some linguine and then some spices here. I've just got some dried chili, uh, some mustard seeds and some fennel seeds and a stock. These little jelly stock pot cubes, absolutely brilliant. Uh, oh, and also to finish it, I have some lovely spring greens which I've washed uh, and, and, and are just drying here. Uh, okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna fire up my pan um, to about medium sort of setting, make sure it's dry. And I'm just gonna pop in some vegetable oil here. Uh, you can use olive oil at this stage as well if you wished. Um, you could also use butter, um, but that would obviously, wouldn't make it. Um, vegan. So when we were thinking about what to cook, we thought we'd do a dish that was relatively easy to do, um, quite an enjoyable thing. I love making soup. We have a lot of soup at home and we make a lot of soup at the cafe too. Uh, also something that takes into account the abundance of fresh, lovely, beautiful vegetables that are grown in our area. Um, also along the way, I'm going to be showing you some little things like if you were um, if you did eat meat, you could add some chorizo, or you could add some bacon. You could use a chicken stock. Um, also, this could be a great garnish to use as a, a piece of grilled meat or a piece of fish. Um, it's sort of, it's a great thing too, because it's got some basic skills, which would also give a good foundation to progress and do many good things. Okay, so I've started cooking. I have my leeks and my garlic in my pan. I'm just gonna season at this point. A little bit of salt. With salt, season with as much or as little as you wish. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, just, I think basic rule of thumb, if you season at the beginning with salt, you don't need as much um, to get flavor out of ingredients. I'm gonna sweat this down, turn it down a little bit. You want it soft, sort of translucent. I mean, it already smells lovely. You don't wanna burn it at this point. we're looking for. So while that's gently cooking, I'm going to just chop some of this chilli as well. I think I'll just go with one piece actually. These are quite pungent. I'm just going to slice them. Just like so. Or you can chop them. I think slices are nicer. A bit more visual. Okay, in we go. Okay, so moving on now. Basically, all we're gonna do is um, look at our vegetables and we're gonna work out the sort of what we have. So a carrot uh, and a parsnip and a leek is gonna cook, um, it's gonna take longer to cook than say a uh, courgette and some um, spring, spring greens, the cabbages, they don't take that long. So you kinda need to put them in a rough order as to how quickly or how slowly they cook. Also, really not okay with an induction pod. <laughs> right, so I'm going to start my vegetables. So, 
I'm going to peel them. Again, you don't have to peel them. I mean, there's a certain decent amount of flavour as well in, in the skins of things, like potatoes especially. Um, very rarely um, peel potatoes, uh, but I'm going to peel these just a little bit. If you don't peel them, just give them a good wash. So, parsnip, one carrot, oh, and some fennel. Love fennel. So, just top and tail. And then cut them into a very sort of rough cube. I mean, we're not going for like complete uniform shapes here. I mean, it doesn't really matter. There we go. Obviously, take your time. Don't rush. Okay. There we go. Parsnips. These leeks are a bit softer now. Here we go with those. Okay. And then our carrots. Again. Same thing, just a rough, rough dice really, like this, and it's always nice to get your vegetables from a green grocer as opposed to a supermarket, I think the quality it's just better because it's a lot fresher. Most of the time it's been picked in that area and it's been taken to the shop within a, um, you know, a much quicker time frame than like supermarkets that hanging around in warehouses a bit and then, which is never as good. So it's still just sweating nice and gently here. Sweat, sweat, sweat. Have a little bit of pepper at this point if you want. Just like so. Now I'm going to go with my fennel. All we're going to do with this fennel is just cut it into quarters. And I'm just going to take the root out, like so. And then I'm going to cut them again like this. And then down. Right, so, again, rough, rough dice, rough chop. Now, if you wanted to add some meat to this, what would be really nice would be some chopped uh, chorizo or some kind of sort of cured sausage or salsiccia as they call it in Italy. Uh, or you could do some smoked bacon um, in at this stage so you start to render the fat out so it all sort of works together would, would be lovely. But so far, we've just got oil in here. So at the moment we're vegan. Again, you can add butter at this point too if you wish. It's totally up to you. I like that. Mm. Well, I haven't burnt anything yet. This is quite good, this thing. Normally cook on gas, you see. Last bit of fennel. Okay. In we go. Just put everything in there. Carrots. Cool. Right, I'm just going to leave this to sweat down for about 10 minutes. Get it nice and soft. So, cool. Cool. So that's sweating down nicely. At this stage, I think about 20 minutes, 25, 30, depends. But it's lovely to get it really soft at this point. This is, uh, if you're in Italy now, you call this bit the sofrito, which is uh, quite an important part of anything really. Uh, sauces, uh, stews, risottos, always starts with some form of vegetable being gently cooked down in oil or butter. Um, cool, so we'll carry on with that and then we'll go for the for the next stage for this dish. This is getting some um, some spice in there. Um, now it sort of opens up to any spice you wish really. Um, obviously we've got some black pepper in there already. 
I'm going to use some of these. These are fennel seeds. Now, probably use too many of these and probably get carried away by the use of fennel seeds, but I think they lend to such an amazing flavour, very aromatic, um, that sort of anise taste is always fantastic. Now, I know I've got fennel in there, um, but I kind of use fennel seeds like you would uh, black pepper for a seasoning. I think it just gives a really good um, seasoning and a really good uh, vibe for whatever dish you're, you're, you're cooking, really. Um, so I'm just going to add sort of a generous teaspoon. I also have a little bit more chilli. I know I put green chilli in there too, but I'm also going to put just a little bit of dried red chilli in there too. And then also, I've got some uh, yellow mustard seeds. I'm going to add some of those. Uh, onion seeds would be good in this. Um, nigella seeds would be good in this. Um, yeah, any, anything really. Anything. In fact, you could, uh, at this point, you could add a load of curry powder, um, a dash of soy, some chopped tomatoes, and some coconut milk, and you'd have a sort of, um, you'd have a kind of curry, a vegetable curry on your hands. Okay, cool. So what I'm trying to do with uh, spices, it's always good to add your spices, and you kind of fry your spices, you toast your spices, um, just to release the oils, um, so you get all those flavours sort of working together. Lovely. Okay, so we're getting there with this. Now I'm going to add uh, courgette. Again, just into a rough sort of dice. Um, if you have a food processor at home, you could always just bung everything in there and whiz it up. They are pretty good, especially if you're in a hurry. feeling a bit nervous about cooking vegetables in this manner, just sweating them down. If you feel your pan's too hot, just turn your heat down a little bit. Uh, if you feel like your pan is way too hot, you can just take it off, add a splash of water, um, and that will stop the that will stop the cooking process. If you feel like you're on the verge of, you know, things starting to burn, things starting to caramelise a bit too much, just either take it off the heat, turn your heat down add a little bit of water, that's absolutely fine. I normally have, you can see, I have a jug of water here because my sink's sort of quite away over there. Just in case, really, just so you've got complete control over what you're doing. Um, also, before you start, probably a good idea to just have all your things sort of readily available so you know where things are um, and roughly sort of prepared. Also, I think, we mentioned at the beginning, this is completely flexible with whatever's good, you know, whatever's in season, uh, whatever looks good at the, or um, alternatively, if, you, if you've got a load of odds and ends kicking about in your fridge, like half a carrot, um, you know, half a courgette, half a bag of peas in your freezer, it's a really, really great way of just clearing out your fridge. We kind of do that at home once a week, or we'll make something with just basically all of the, yeah, half eaten bits of vegetables we have, so you're not wasting anything, um, which is not where you want to be really. Food waste is not the best of things. Okay, so this is all nice and sweated down nicely now. It's nice and soft and it, it's starting to smell really good. So we're going to add a little bit of vinegar, okay? We use this raw cider vinegar, which is also great for adding to water and drinking. So I'm just going to add a tiny little dash. Like so, again, you don't have to add this, 
Uh, you can have as much as you want. You could add white wine vinegar. You could add a red wine vinegar. Um, yeah, I think I like cooking with vinegar. I think it gives a good flavour to things. It gives a good sort of tartness, a good sourness. And also having that extra acidity in things, um, it kind of makes it easier for your stomach to break your food down. That acidity. So if I've added that, okay, now I'm going to add in my tin of chopped tomatoes. And I'm going to stir those in. Just like this. Okay, so we we're talking about stock, where did I get to? Yes, you can add as much or as little stock as you wish. Um, also, at this point, don't add too much, because it's a lot easier to add stock or, or water than, to, than it is to take it away. <laughs> uh, also, at this point as well, I'm going to grab a spoon. Just give it a little taste. And just, yeah, I'm going to add a bit more salt. Just a little bit. Stir that in too. Lovely. Right, so this is starting to come up now. I'm just going to turn it down. And then we'll cook this out for probably about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Um, if I was adding, it wouldn't be a minestrone because minestrone is sort of more than always comes with pasta. Um, this would be a good opportunity now if you wanted to add a handful of lentils. The red, um, the red split lentils are really good because uh, they cook a bit quicker. Um, they're really good to use in soups. Or if you wanted to add, you could add a, a handful of quinoa to this. Um, if you wanted to do it with pearl barley, you could add pearl barley at this stage. Uh, you would need to cook it for at least an hour. Uh, and, we, and you would need a lot more uh, liquid too. Um, but we will put our pasta in sort of towards the end of the cooking. Okay, excellent. So we'll cook that out. Okay, so we've had about 20, 25 minutes on this now. Uh, things have reduced down a little bit. Obviously all the vegetables have softened. Um, it's gotten a, a little bit thicker um, and it's really started to cook out and, de and develop. Um, develop some some flavour. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to add some pasta to it. Um, we've got some linguine here, um, which we're going to add. Now, obviously you need to break this into little shapes. Um, so a really cool uh, uh, little tip is to get a clean um, tea towel. Okay, grab your pasta and just roll it up, like so. Okay, and then find um, the corner of a table or a worktop and basically just get your cloth and with a bit of force just pull it down. Oh that's satisfying. There we go. And then oh goodness. And you'll end up with some nice sort of smashed up bits of pasta. There you go. Cool. So we can pop that in now. Like I say. Um, now, if you don't have linguine, or you don't fancy doing that, you could use um, some little pieces of macaroni. Um, the tiny little tubes of pasta, I think they're called ditali or ditali or something. Or you could open up a can of chickpeas um, or a can of cannellini beans. Uh, just drain them, give them a little swill, um, and, and pop those in too. Um, cool. So, what we're going to do now again is give that another. Probably about 15 minutes just to cook the pasta out. Um, yeah, and it, and it, and it won't take, take long to cook. And then we're just gonna finish it with some of the, the spring greens. Uh, you could have um, spinach as well, uh, some sliced up spring onions. Uh, you could do a handful of peas out of the freezer. Uh, frozen peas are very good. Um, yeah, pretty much whatever you fancy. Yeah, I think. Okay, so that's had about another 15 minutes. The pasta is nice and soft, it's nice and cooked through. Um, also, I've added a, a really good handful, a generous handful of that beautiful um, spring green. I've just shredded that down um, and just added it. So this is sort of our, it's our end result now. Just a couple of last things to go through. 
Uh, I'm happy with that um, texture, that sort of consistency. It's nice and thick. If you wanted it a little bit thinner, like we mentioned earlier, you could add some more water or, or you could add some more stock. Um, so just one more thing to do now is clean spoon. And I'm just gonna have a little taste. Oh, it's got quite a kick. <clears throat> Very nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper, just a touch, and just a tiny bit more salt. Again, salt, still quite controversial. It's not a bad thing, um, but obviously just be sensible. Don't go crazy on the salt, because again, salt, it's better to add it in little sort of, um, um, it's better to add it in stages in small amounts, because it's something you can add, but it's not something you can take away. Okay. So finally now, we're just gonna quickly serve this up. So I just have a bowl. Again, any bowl, um, any bowl you wish, or a mug, um, and we're just gonna serve that up in a bowl. Like so, just plonk it in. Uh, and then you could finish this with, I've got some nice extra virgin olive oil here. I'm just gonna put a little glug over the top. Um, you can add a spoonful of yogurt, um, a spoonful of creme fraiche. Uh, we give it a nice addition, a nice finish. Um, cool, so there we have it guys, the finished minestrone soup. Um, loads of possibilities, loads of variation. Uh, just a good thing to get those um, vegetables cut, sweated down, seasoned, added flavours. We didn't talk about herbs either. There's all sorts of herbs you can add to, bay leaf, rosemary, thyme, sage would be good. Finish it with some parsley perhaps. Um, and that's that. Uh, we are on social media, we're on Instagram and Facebook, Meeting Place Cafe. We do post recipes and uh, videos on um, other dishes too, always quite seasonal with it. Uh, also feel free to get in touch with us on social media. Um, if you've got any questions about anything, we'll always endeavour to get back. Might be a few days, uh, but we will. So thanks ever so much for your time and enjoy.